Think Tech Hawaii. Civil engagement lives here. Aloha, everyone. Welcome back to another episode of Hawaii Food and Farmers Series. I am Pomai Weigert, and I'm going to be your hostess with the mostest today. I'm excited because we have Carolyn from Reuse Hawaii with us on the show. And today, we're going to talk bigger picture. We're going to talk waste. <laughs> we're going to talk uh, collaboration. So everyone, welcome, Carolyn. Hi, Carolyn. Hello. Thank you for having me. Thank you for being here today. So. Um, I know that we are a food and farmers series, um, but when we had met and I had gone down to your warehouse, which I'm excited for you to tell everybody about, uh, we were sort of talking about bigger picture, bigger picture thinking and how all industries are connected. So could you just mm -hmm. give us a little bit of an overview of you know, who you are, what you do, what's your organization, what's happening? Sure thing. Um, so um, we are Reuse Hawaii, and we have been around about 10 years. And what we do, we're a nonprofit, and our mission is to actually divert construction and demolition waste from going to our landfill. And how we do that is through a process called deconstruction. So uh, we are hired by homeowners or building owners, anyone who has a structure that they want taken down, but they don't. Uh, want it to come down via demolition where they just crash it down. Okay. So it's a it's a greener way of saving material that's actually still in good reusable condition. We have employees who go out and hand disassemble structures and we bring all this material back to our warehouse and we price it and we put it out for sale to the community cool. at a discount. So how long has this how long have you guys been happening? Um, we were founded in 06. Okay. So uh, we're definitely, uh, we're in it. And who are, the, who are the founders of this big dream mm -hmm. uh, and that happened? There were two founders, okay. um, Quinn Vidim okay. and Selena Tarantino. Okay. They were uh, both um, co-executive directors. Now Quinn is the primary executive director okay. of the organization. So that happened in 06 when, you know, they were just like, we need this in Hawaii. So there was nothing like it. So, mm -mm. so uh, you know, the waste is definitely uh, something that is a big real, issue here. especially mm -hmm. with a lot of the construction and de uh, demolition, mm -hmm. you know, industry right mm -hmm. now. All the construction happening, right? So. And and expansion, and uh, I could see how uh, we would have a need mm -hmm. to sort of look at alternatives. I feel like everyone's sort of looking at what is perhaps a different method that we could use to do stuff. And where are you folks located? We are in Kaka'ako, right outside of downtown, okay. on the Makai end of Kiave Street, and that's right next to the School of Medicine. Oh. So we have a big warehouse that we rent and uh, a lumber yard as well. So we Let's talk about the warehouse. Okay. <laughs> Let's talk about the warehouse, because it was kind of a big takeaway for me. <clears throat> I uh, got to visit this week? This week, yeah. I got to visit this week. And it was super cool. It's kind of like um, the Goodwill Home Depot. <laughs> so if you like Goodwill and you like Home Depot, this is your dream come true. <laughs> I um, I wasn't expecting that. So I, I feel I also put it on my own social networks to be like, who has been here? Because if you, um, it's a great place for imagination, but then also um, it is, it's like the used stuff, but some of it is brand new, yes. which I thought was like, you know, um, I really got an education also with that because I think people are thinking like, oh, it's just scraps of stuff. And it's not, it's not only scraps of stuff. I mean, there's contractors who had ex extras, there's people who had like these beautiful vintage homes. There was this vintage finds section. I was kind of pretty thrilled about that. Mirrors, hot tubs, <laughs> odd, ovens. Um, and I, I felt really inspired to, or I really feel like definitely for my generation, we're looking at um, new can also be sort of upcycled, you know? So 
Uh, who is shopping there? Can you tell me who's kind oh my of gosh. Who, who comes to <laughs> to reuse Hoy? A lot of people shop. Um, so we have everybody from contractors to um, designers, artists, yeah. farmers, mm -hmm. um, because our prices are lower. You mm -hmm. know, because it's used material, but it's still in good condition. So mm -hmm. people come. You know, if they have a, a DIY project, uh, schools come. Mm -hmm. um, you know, like I said, contractors, um, you know, just, just a lot of people who just want a creative outlet. And you're a nonprofit? We're a 501c3 Yeah, nonprofit. 501c3. Yeah. So that means mm -hmm. if, if people help or are able to contribute things, um, then they can get what can they get? So uh, the community can make oh. donations of their good reusable uh, uh, building materials, and they can um, they can receive a donation receipt from mm -hmm. us. Um, is that kind of yep, yeah, yep, that's totally. what I meant. Yep, yeah, that's what I was like. Can we tell yeah. everybody that? So it is Absolutely. like the goodwill. It's like, or you know, like when you go and you drop stuff off, and they give you the thing that says you helped. But then also, like you could go there. I mean, uh, you said that you have regulars too, like people who just like Do when. Goodwill regulars and Home mm -hmm. Depot regulars. Absolutely. So it was just like this match made. Yeah, definitely. We do have regulars. Um, there's a fellow out in uh, Waimanalo. He has a bonsai oh. school, actually. And he comes to Reuse Hawaii all the time. And I mean, the regulars are great. They always appreciate what, that we're there, um, mm -hmm. which makes us feel good, of course. And then people who donate from the community are also glad we're there. So yeah. Uh, what about, can you tell me about some of the like, what are your goals or what motivates you guys to do what it is that you're doing? Yeah, I mean, the environmental mission that we have is really important. Um, um, our, our goals are to expand to the neighbor islands, actually. Oh, okay. we've, we've started to, we have a job happening in Kona right now, so mm -hmm. that's kind of our foray into, okay. uh, you know, our neighbor island expansion. Mm -hmm. um, we, just, we just need more awareness. Um, you know, our goals really are just to make make sustainability something that's integrated into people's lives, mm -hmm. no matter what they do. You mm -hmm. know, it's just it's a it's a way of life. Mm -hmm. And were you always were you always in this kind of industry, or how did you get get into this? <laughs> how did you find yourself? Here today on this show, <laughs> talking about talking about how to save the world and environment. Can you give us a little? How much that? time do you have? I know. <laughs> okay. um, well, my background, my my degrees in journalism, my background's okay. in uh, advertising and communications. Um, and in that world, whenever I had a pro bono account, I always enjoyed it. I always wanted to do something cause related. Um, and um, uh, my husband works at Reuse Hawaii, and um, at, there was a point at which I was looking just to volunteer, and so I got into reuse just by volunteering, and uh, then joined about four years ago, and just okay. loved what they did, and really got to know what it was. Because when you work in an organization like that, you really feel your your contribution, you yeah. know, and and the interaction that I would have with customers was so um, it was so gratifying. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. to see that we were doing something that people actually needed and wanted, and it also helps the community. So, mm -hmm. yeah, really important. So you love it? Yeah, yeah, a little. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I, know. I always love to. I love to ask loaded questions like That's that. Okay. Like, That's okay. oh, so do you love what you do? Uh, yeah. But you must if you're Absolutely. still there, and it sounds like you're really passionate yeah. uh, about the work that you folks are doing. Um, what about the need and demand for what you folks do? I know that that was a big part of why the founders started everything. They saw a need and demand, but I feel like the general consumer uh, doesn't always put all of those things together. You know, even mm. in farming, you know, people, you know, everyone in farming has known for a long time that we import so much of, of our food. And then it's like really getting that message out to the consumer. <laughs> so it's, um, what are what are some some buzz statistics or words that you folks uh, use to educate people on mm. why what you're doing is vital? Interesting. Thanks for bringing that yeah. up. Um, you know, the industry uh, demolition and construction um, uh, is 35 percent of everything in our local landfills. 
So it's it's pretty considerable. Wow. So the need is there, um, you know, and and about 450 demolition jobs um, took place, I think, last year. Mm -hmm. um, we did about 40 of those whole house kind of deconstruction jobs that we do. So you can see that there's a there's a lot more. Oh yeah, you'll never run out of work. Yeah. So a lot of the the, the demolition jobs uh -huh. actually do qualify to be deconstruction jobs. So, oh, okay. you know, there's opportunity there. So, mm -hmm. so the need is there. Um, Absolutely. Yeah, and and um, the demand uh, is growing actually mm -hmm. on both on our deconstruction services side. You know, we're getting more and more business, which is fantastic. Um, also, just people when they become aware of, you know, they want to know what they can do to contribute to sustainability um, and environmental sustainability. And this is a really real way that people can contribute by shopping at the warehouse or hiring us for deconstruction you know this this keeps it going is the the price point comparable for deconstruction uh, like if how does that all happen so yeah it is actually um, it depends it's case by case okay, yeah. but if someone wanted say their house deconstructed versus demolished they would contact us we would do a free walkthrough and then okay. do a proposal money wise it's it's very similar mm -hmm. um, we take longer because we're hand disassembling yeah, structures yeah, yeah. so usually if there's a timeline that we can't work within yeah. we might not get that, yeah, that yeah, business yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but um, it works out financially for people you know we are hired we there it's yes. paid for our deconstruction mm -hmm. services but um, the value of the materials that we bring back and log and save the value of those becomes their tax deduction so it's oh, a nice offset yes, yes yeah. that was i remember I was yeah. like, there were all these sort of things that you were telling me that that are cool or or like i mean i don't want to say innovative because like they they were always possible but you know um just like these win-win kind of scenarios i feel like that is what is necessary in business and, mm -hmm. and in new business. I actually also wanted to mention that um, uh, while I was there, you showed me sort of this area where uh, there are properties that have old trees left over. Oh, right. Yeah, so right. I like, I'm just, this is what I'm telling like my friends when <laughs> I, I was like, oh my gosh, have you guys been to reuse? Uh, and you teamed up with a tree cutter? Yes, yes, we did. So what is his name? Let's Eric. See. Eric. Uh, his name is Eric Saavedra. He has his own company called Rough Cut Hawaii. OK, OK. Yeah. So teamed up with him uh, to cut the trees from this property. And they're already cut into that those cool tabletops that all the cool people want. <laughs> so yeah. I. Uh, <laughs> When I saw that, I feel like that was a big takeaway for me because I, when I'm, you know, you go to all these cool places and you're like, wow, there's a cool table. Yeah. Um, but like being able to partner, I really liked that partnering component. Yeah, um, it's been a really great partnership. It kind of happened um, about a year ago. Our executive director was driving downtown near the Capitol and they were taking a big shade tree down. And he said, hey, where are you going with that? And and that began, uh, you know, our, our kind of, um, you know, program, yeah, in connection to the tree milling program that we do. So tree cuttings are kind of vetted, then they come back. So we've had monkey pod, mango, that sort of thing, little high value hardwood trees. Oh. We made the connection with Eric. He has this great mobile sawmill. I kind of oh. can nerd out about this tool yeah, because yeah. it's mobile mobile and he takes a big tree and he slabs it into you know two inch thick live edge slabs and you know true to our mission we want to be able to distribute this material and make it affordable so we work with him to make sure that the prices are right and man it has taken off I mean people want these it's not everywhere you can go and just buy a live edge slab for a tabletop so it's really really nice to be able to offer this type of material to the community, you yes. know, at an affordable price, so. Yes, oh, that's awesome. Okay, we're gonna come back in just a sec to talk about more cool things. We'll see you in a few. If you're not in control of how you see yourself, then who is? Live above the influence. Hello, I'm Dave Stevens, host of the Cyber Underground. This is where we discuss everything that relates to computers that's just going to scare you out of your mind. So come join us every week 
here on thinktechhawaii.com, 1 p.m. on Friday afternoons. And then you can go see all our episodes on YouTube. Just look up the Cyber Underground on YouTube. All our shows will show up. And please follow us. We're always giving you current, relevant information to protect you, keeping you safe. Aloha. Aloha, I'm Richard Concepcion, the host of Hispanic Hawaii. You can watch my show every other Tuesday at 2 p.m. We will bring you entertainment, educational, and also we tell you what is happening right here within our community. Think Tech Hawaii. Aloha. <music>a quick break that we took. I'm Pomai Weiger. You are here at Hawaii Food and Farmer Series. And I'm here with Carolyn from Reuse Hawaii. And we are just talking about what Reuse Hawaii does and how they help the community um, get things um, that other people didn't need. So it was, it's sort of like this movement. Uh, but what did you call it? When I came to visit you, I keep calling it the, the Goodwill Home Depot, mm -hmm. but it's industrial materials. Is that what you yeah, said? Yeah, it's, it's building, materials building materials that have been salvaged by our de deconstruction services. Okay. okay. Um, and also, so if you come into the warehouse, you'll, most of what's in there is from our deconstruction jobs, but uh, the rest is from just community donations. So, okay. so if the public can shop there seven days a week. Yeah. And find doors, windows, lumber, you know. Inspiration. Inspiration, it's old light, vintage things. Light fixtures, mm -hmm. uh, mirrors, yeah. toilets. <laughs> I mean, no, it was, it was, it really is. Yeah. Um, I mean, and I didn't really know that. So um, sort of through these circles, I feel like uh, people have been telling me, go see Reuse Hawaii, go yeah. see Reuse Hawaii. It's like, okay, okay, I'm gonna go. They're super cool. Like, yes, but I, I didn't really know what that meant. Like, I, I knew you folks reuse stuff, you know, but it's so m much more bigger picture. Mm -hmm. um, are there any organizations that you currently uh, collaborate with specifically? I know that you have um, corporate sponsorships and, and people who support you because you are a nonprofit, but when you're looking at the future of keeping your organization sustainable, uh, what does that look like? What do you see? I think I just see more awareness mm -hmm. in the community in general. Um, you know, the, the demand for things affects, obviously, the providers of those things. Um, and, and we are seeing a lot more um, or companies you know, businesses calling us. Um, we've done uh, commercial jobs. Um, we're doing a resort right now in Kona. We we did, and that means you're gonna go there mm -hmm. and deconstruct it. Correct. Wow. And we just, you know, a couple of years ago, we deconstructed all of the Winnie units, which are the Punahou School Elementary School classrooms, oh. which were built between 1950 and 1955, uh, designed by Vladimir Osipov, who's a local mid-century modern um, wow, some gems genius in there. Yes. architect and um, so you know we we've been able fortunately to get a lot of you know kind of historic like you know kind yeah. of and jobs. does it usually like are you head hunting them I mean I suspect <laughs> that they're coming to find you you know it's uh, how many people work with you guys you know because it's mm -hmm. I, I feel like that's that's often a misconception that people think there's just an unlimited amount of staffing <laughs> you know where in, in a lot of the organizations that we're a part of you know it's um, usually it's not a really big staff but you have a you have a huge warehouse you have demo you have uh, like warehouse communications innovation all this kind of stuff how many people work for you and how do they how did they start working for you? Like, how did that Good all happen? Good question. So our entire staff, I believe, is at about 
35 people, okay. including our deconstruction services. So okay. nine of those folks uh, manage the warehouse, you know, look after the warehouse. Yeah, yeah. We have a warehouse manager. So we're a full organization in that yes. we have, you know, irons and all the, the fires. Um, <laughs> so, uh, you know, we do collaborate a lot with um, other, say, contractors in the industry. So we're a deconstruction operation, but we okay. work within the construction industry. Mm -hmm. We're a licensed yes. contractor, yes. but we're the only deconstruction services contractor okay. in the state. Oh, that's right. Not yeah. demolition, deconstruction. That's okay. Yes, that's okay. yes, yeah. yes. Well, and <laughs> I feel like that's ed that's good education, you mm -hmm. know, to, to yeah. just sort of, um, it, is the, it is about sort of these little shifts um, you know, because it's cool, sounds similar, but it's it mm -hmm. is different. It's actually, I think of it as kind of like the opposite of demolition, because mm -hmm. demolition is just crash Power it down, down. and yeah. we actually carefully <laughs> disassemble <laughs> homes, and we can save up to eighty percent of a structure. And wow, so, gosh, it's pretty cool. Like if you come to the warehouse and you look around, it's like, man, all this would be in the landfill had it not been for an intervention like we do. We come in and, you know, we save it. So. And how much of a time difference yeah. is it, like, to do deconstruction versus demolition? Good question. Um, I think the stat is on a 2,000 square foot home, you know, demolition can happen in a matter of hours or a day. Yeah. Um, we take about, I want to say, about eight days five to eight days, depending on the complexity and, and the structure itself, mm -hmm. but on average, you know. Okay, so not drastically. Right. right. Yeah, because I was thinking like, oh, please don't tell me months. You know, like, <laughs> no, no, no. Okay, so I feel like that sounds about right, you so, know, because you're, you're carefully taking all the pieces apart. You're not just like, mm -hmm bulldozing it over. Right, exactly. So, uh, you know, the largest job we're doing today is in Kona, and that that's taking months because it's 81 acres. Yeah. So we're in there, you know, so it really depends on the scale. But we also do, like, a, a remodel-related deconstruction. So okay. if someone just has a kitchen they want to replace, we go in and we carefully remove the cabinets and, you know, uh, take out the appliances and save those if they're working I and see, so forth. I so, see. So it doesn't yeah. have to be so big. It can also no, be yeah. small. Yeah, totally. So one of the one of the reasons why I did want to bring you here on the show, uh, our show is called Food and Farmers Series, and um, I know that what you do may not directly seem like it is directly connected, but uh, everything is connected. So um, you know, really putting that messaging out too is um, we're all relative we're all relative to each other, um, especially food. So uh, when we were talking about how can reuse Hawaii um, support the food and farming and agribusiness uh, community with the services that you provide, and, and then us being an outlet to share with that mm. network that, hi, go be friends with them over here. So can can you talk to me a little bit about what you see there? Sure, definitely. And then we were talking a little bit before the show started about the parallels between yes. Reuse Hawaii and farming and, yes. you know, uh, stewardship. land stewardship yes. is, is the obvious one. And also just, um, you know, sustainability in general, mm -hmm. right? So we definitely can be a resource. And like I mentioned before, farmers are definitely those who can shop for more affordable materials yeah. for, for what you need. For greenhouses, for for wash stations, for, again, it's like, think of it like a Home Depot. Yeah. And everybody pretty much goes there if they're going to build anything. Yeah. So it's like a place um, to at least be looking at materials that you need that you could find there. So I feel like that's an obvious one. I mean, yeah. it's like, I don't know if people, <laughs> it's just, I, I feel like that is a clear one. Like, we're building stuff, go here and mm -hmm. look at if you guys have stuff. Right. But what else do you see? I mean, um, I, I definitely think that, you know, just us being a community hub is where we want to go. Yeah. We want to be able to host events. We want to be kind of this place where people can, you know, share. Yeah. 
information and 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 for example, we we are the location of the Honolulu Tool Library. That's a partnership that we have with okay, them. Okay, okay. And yeah. just in that, you know, people who don't have the money tool or tool libraries, a just, tool library. So interesting. that's just one example mm -hmm. of a, 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 an ongoing collaboration that we have uh -huh. that helps the community. Um, you know, when they don't, they just check out tools as if it were a book, but it's tools. So they check out a tool, they keep what? it for a certain number of days, and then they return it because let's just be honest, tools are expensive. Yes. Yeah. This, where does this exist? Where? They're, the tool library is located within Reuse Hawaii now. Wow. They recently got their own 501c3, okay. but we are a partnership. We share the space. They that you sign up with them, pay an annual, very small subscription to be a member of the tool library, and you know. So that's just one example of yeah. a collaboration. Yeah, that's a, that was a good example. That was, yes. that was a good example. Well, just just because again, if we're not reaching out, because we had also talked about that, you know that. Um, Things in Hawaii, they can be very siloed and very clicky, and no one really, they like stay in the industry that they're in. But there's so much to be had if you're able to bridge build and like, does everybody know about the tool library? <laughs> like that's, I mean, that is located mm -hmm. within the reuse Hawaii uh, warehouse, you know, and that, if we don't talk about those things, mm -hmm. then how is anybody going to know mm -hmm. that that is an option? Right. Especially if you use tools, yeah. which is, <laughs> I'm not a really big tool. I might just go look at the library for a little bit and sure. see what is uh, what is possible. But mm -hmm. um, knowing that it is a possibility is yeah. super neat. So they also uh, conduct workshops in our workshop. Oh, okay. um, right now they're on Sundays, but you can go to their hnltoollibrary.org and check them out. Um, but you know, I mean, we're now. I've been in this role for uh, a few months, so I'm <laughs> <laughs> trying now to do more community outreach and yeah. see what the possibilities are. Because yeah. I feel like as a community, we're so creative. Yeah. You know, and um, and we need to be. I feel like again, yeah. when we're looking at sustainability, uh, that is going to require innovation, which is also going to require collaboration. Definitely. So. Definitely. I mean, being able to build these mm -hmm. kinds of partnerships. When you look at the future of Hawaii, uh, what do you see? What do you hope for? I really hope for, um, you know, just more awareness. Mm. You know, um, when, and I can just talk about waste as one example, mm -hmm, yes. you know, it's something really in our control. Um, think about when you buy something, um, like a lot of customers who come into the warehouse, they say, oh, I needed this thing. I thought I would just try you guys first. That's a great first step, right? Yep. Just mm -hmm. check it out. Just be aware of what your options are and, and think about, you know, how, because honestly, a lot of uh, older material is actually in better condition, if you believe, you know, mm -hmm. just things were made a little differently, especially in lumber, of course. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, you know, don't be afraid to explore, you know, I just, I think people who are thinking outside of the box and being aware and thinking creatively, mm -hmm. um, that's the first step. And, and I, I really do feel, um, you know, a movement happening here, you yeah. know, so, yeah. especially with the keiki. So we give tours uh -huh. to schools and things and okay. these, these kids are so smart. Yeah. So they're very aware. And we're already kind of building them to look at those kinds of things in their in their life. Um, so we just have a few seconds left. Can you tell us um, again how people can find you mm -hmm. and and if there's any last things that you want them to know <laughs> about what you folks do and, and mm -hmm. where you're going with all this? Uh, let us know. Tell us what, what's happening. So we are located uh, in Kaka'ako. We're open seven days a week. Mm -hmm. You can just Google Reuse Hawaii. Um, we're up there in the index, so uh -huh. easy for us to find. Yep. So we're open seven days from nine to five, so uh -huh. something for everybody. Mm -hmm. um, you know, just I encourage people to come down and, and check it out and just so open your mind. So do I. So <laughs> do I. I, I want to bring my family. I, I, I want to bring my dad. I want to, you know, uh, Anyone who is creative, I feel like even if just to check out the place, yeah. it's sort of just a, a place to draw your creativity. Yeah. Um, you can also find them on Instagram and on the social networks. Uh, they're there and on your website as well. They have a, 
uh, is that nifty video on there? Like, uh, you showed me a video of, you know, where the founders talk. And, you know, when I went into the office, it was like, he oh, queued right, up the video. Right, right. Um, it's not, but okay. it, it will be. Okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, anyway, and, and you can go to their website and make contact directly yes. if you need to. And I feel like that was sort of where I was going with that Absolutely. is just to get more information about them and, and all the good work that they're doing and, and how you can team up and collaborate. Carolyn, thank you so much for being on the show today. <laughs> Super neat. I'm really grateful for um, the time you've taken. Thank so. you for having me. Really appreciate it. <laughs> Bye, guys.